On the 15th of March, 1965, the Motown Review jetted into London. A hardcore of fans from the British Tamla Motown Appreciation Society met Martha and the Vandellas, Stevie Wonder, the Miracles and the Supremes at Heathrow Airport. We had gotten such a huge, wonderful reception. We, I think it was EMI who was handling everything and the fans who had shown up at the airport. It was, we, our expectations of the tour was so great. marketing, distribution, all these things were very new for a black company. And uh, I would say probably the, the, the first problem would be to how do we sell this music? So now you open up to other ethnic groups. So it wasn't just all a black company. Very, very early on, there were uh, there was Barney Ellis, who was a, the marketing guy. And I, I think Barney's, I, should say, I think he's Italian. <laughs> We were excited about the fish and chips, so we would always get fish and chips because was, that was so new for us, you know. And then it was eat, eating out of a newspaper, you know, that was very exciting. But, you know, I wasn't that thrilled about the English food. It was uh, that, that blood pie or, you know, we were like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Despite the strange food, cold weather, and low attendance at their shows, the Motown artists always felt welcome in the UK. We were so happy to be here. We were thrilled to be seeing another part of the world that we'd never seen, never experienced, to meet people, to understand that people were basically just the way you are. This was like such a, a beautiful um, sort of awakening, especially for black people, to see that, wow, people really like us too. You know, we weren't put down. We were accepted on the merits of our talents. From Gretna, the tour bus made its way through Scotland to Glasgow for the Motown show on the 1st of April, 1965. Thank you very much. We couldn't even drink out of a water fountain in public unless it's set for colored only. And that was pretty demeaning. So for her to say, here you are, three little black girls, one day you're going to be singing before kings and queens, we're like looking at her like, <laughs> what is she talking about? You know, it was like so silly. We, we didn't believe any of that stuff. And then she also said, you girls, and she's speaking to all the groups, are like diamonds in the rough, and we're just here to polish you up. Well, that was pretty uplifting for someone to say. And even for her to say you're singing before kings and queens, that was pretty uplifting, but we didn't believe it because it was so far-fetched. But... It did happen. Couldn't even drink out of a water fountain in public unless it's set for colored only. And that was pretty demeaning. So for her to say, here you are, three little black girls, one day you're going to be singing before kings and queens, we're like looking at her like, <laughs> what is she talking about? You know, it was like so silly. We, we didn't believe any of that stuff. And then she also said, you girls, and she's speaking to all the groups, are like diamonds in the rough, and we're just here to polish you up. Well, that was pretty uplifting for someone to say. And even for her to say you're singing before kings and queens, that was pretty uplifting, but we didn't believe it because it was so far-fetched. But it did happen. They had their chefs and all prepare the meals, and it was ooh, just very push, push, push. And it was one of those times you thought about what Mrs. Powell has said. You know, one day you'll be dining with kings and queens and this and that. We're like, whoa, we're doing it. <laughs> we started drinking sherry. Oh, we were oh so chic. Have a little sherry, please. <laughs> that was so British. We were like, oh yeah. I also started drinking champagne during that time too. Good champagne. Mm -hmm. We just thought it was going to be a sellout, you know, and this and that. And each time we would go to a different town and a different theater, and it was the same. It, it, it really never got better. But night after night, looking out into the audience and seeing a half-empty house, England was a big disappointment. <laughs> The tour's failure was most disappointing to the ambitious Barry Gordy. But after the tour's final show in Portsmouth, he was given one last chance to crack the UK by another British friend. Stop in the name of love before you break my heart. Oh, what was so lovely. What was so lovely there, Mary. 
<laughs> you were giving us the most beautiful kind of running commentary of yeah. all of that as you went through. I mean, obviously, it means a lot to you to see all of that. Well, this. no, I, I live it, you know what I mean? Because now my new book that's coming, that's out. It was just out yeah. here in the UK Supreme uh, two, day, two, uh, two days ago mm -hmm. and uh, with Tim's and Hudson's here. And so I came over here because of that. And I talk about the history. First time we did Top of the Pops, we were on Ready, Steady, Go with Dusty Springfield. Your mom, she remember that. Hi, mommy. Yes. Hi, <laughs> I shouldn't say that. She, no, she wasn't that keen to come She's... and see me. Then she found that you were going to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. Like, he's gorgeous. He's gorgeous. Oh, no. Thank you. It was like meeting, this is like meeting the queen for her. Oh, my I God. Know, without having to have a cucumber mm -hmm. sandwich. No. <laughs> <laughs> very exciting. Very English, very I English, know. yeah, it's typically. A... Uh, anyway, so oh, sorry, <laughs> the love. thing is, no, that's okay. The yeah. thing is, is in the book, I talk, you said I did some commentary. The text is all about our wonderful career yeah. and the times we were here, the times we went to Russia. There was a, a photo in there. You don't have the photo, do you, Angela? We we had, uh, we were dressed up as geisha girls. <gasps> wow. Whatever country we went to, they always sort of uh, pictured us in their own culture. So we did the uh -huh. Japanese. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's Japanese for. What does it mean? And and ich, any Germans out there, ich liebe dich. You know, that's what we. Learn. I learned. You know, I love you in every language. It's, say it's what? fascinating that you should say that because when you came to the UK, you sort of went all yes. quite businesslike. That's you? what I'm and saying. British so every, every country and... we would. Yeah, this was uh, the cover. One of these pictures we shot in front of e EMI okay. is for the cover of our album. Which one was that, honey? The Liverpool. Liver a bit of Liverpool. Yeah. Yeah. So these are bands that we've known since. This is were, Jim, actually. I don't this, know. Jim, Jim here and, and, used to run um, the Supremes um, mm -hmm. fan club, didn't you? In the UK. And, it's lovely to see yeah. you. And the guy next to you, Fantastic. I know you too, the one next to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, this was the cover of, of a bit of Liverpool. We did all of the English songs, you know, the, the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. And if Bill Wyman is watching. Hi, Bill! Okay. <laughs> but what's amazing stuff. about all these costumes, they were so elaborate, they were beautiful yes. and really iconic. Is that totally. you and Diana Ross started making them yourself? Well, not these, no. Not God, those not, ones. Oh, but no, in the early those. days. In, the, in early. the very early days. These were all couture gowns that were made. And, and this one particular gown, we wore at the uh, uh, um, command performance for the Queen Mother. The Queen we Mother. Just, you were just talking about the Queen yeah. Mother. Yeah, so we wore those. Is they, that an homage to the Queen Mother? I can't imagine what she. <laughs> Yeah. Sort of, yeah. She, she, she was, she was yeah. so nice to us. She was really nice. So this she was normally a went for backless numbers. Did she? she? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> but, but she was really nice. I tell yeah. you, uh, but Princess Chris, uh, Prince, uh, Princess Margaret was the one who was a bit thing. She says, ooh! What did she say, ooh? Is it a war? A wig you're wearing? <laughs> My English accent is not very good, oh, okay? okay. <laughs> but this was after our concert. Uh, mm. She came up and she said that to me, and I was like, uh, that was kind of rude, you know? <laughs> because she was very loud, and she could have said, you dis she you could have said, darling, is that a hairpiece she wears? She said, no, is that a wig? Well, she was probably drunk. <gasps> yeah. Did you is he always like this? Did you? Well, so <laughs> Mommy, mommy, we've got to talk about your boy here, okay? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you what is, is quite something, though, Mary, when yes. you look through the book and you see the colour and you think to yourself that yes. actually during that time, a lot of your fans over here who may have been watching you on telly mm -hmm. would have been watching you on black and white TV, didn't realise how beautiful and how colourful yes. all of these dresses and these outfits were. But obviously a mm -hmm. real personal connection to you. And we understand yes. that many of them actually went missing and recently they have been missing, reunited. They are missing, yes, and a young mm -hmm. lady found found a top of one of our gowns in the, uh, in Paris, in France. Mm -hmm. This particular one you're showing there. She yeah. found that in, in a boot, a garage sale, we call them garage sales. Mm -hmm. And uh, she saw my name tag in the back of it. So she gave it back to me yesterday. What was it like, Mary, to be reunited with that? Child? It's like a child. I have 11 grandchildren, so it was like one of my children yeah. were missing. Yeah. And the good time for me, okay? <laughs> It's also a big, big year, 60th anniversary of the Motown record label. It is. And you're part yeah. of the new documentary that's coming out. It's called yes. Hitsville, The Making of Motown. It will be, it will be out in theatres here, in a theatre here, not all, on September 30th. OK, but we're really here on the 4th of October, I think. Mm. Yeah. yeah. OK. We've actually got uh, a little clip of it, actually, that we can have a look at. Here's uh, Jamie Foxx and yourself talking about the significance of like uh, black women <laughs> appearing on mainstream TV uh, in the 1960s. Oh. Fine, welcome. Hello, the queen. I need love, love, love. I need my I put her on those white shows. They could see this black girl coming into white folks' TV screens when that wasn't happening. Anytime you really saw black people, it was something 
terrible going on, you know. We are at an era now where TV has opened up the borders of the world. And now they're looking at glamorous, beautiful black faces. What, here? Yeah. So many people are going to enjoy that. And obviously the history of the Supremes is something that you do talk so openly about. Mm. And, you know, on the topic of Diana Ross as well, I mean, mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you would watch her out mm -hmm. of your bedroom window when you were growing up. You'd see her there. Yeah. You all got together and then things, you know, haven't worked out. But do you ever think there will what be What do you mean? What hasn't worked out? I'm here still here 50 some years later. Mm. So is Diane. And, and the thing about it is we started singing together when we were uh, 12 and 13 years mm -hmm. old. So we shared all this history together. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the group was together all those years. And people grow up and they go their separate yeah. ways. Yeah. But there's yeah. no, I want everyone to know yeah. that we love each other, period. Like, so know? there's still a friendship. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, of course. Fantastic. And I do want to say that you mentioned, I'm sorry, you mentioned that the Motown's anniversary is the 60th anniversary coming up. Yeah. Well, we the Supremes, it will be 60th anniversary in two years. So we're also celebrating. Yeah. Yeah. And they have a greatest, uh, we just released the greatest hits Motown yeah. album. And yeah. guess what? It's, it's not just a CD. Thank it's God. A, it's, it's a, a big triple, long playing. Triple. You know, album. Yeah. 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 I remember we used to go to the record shop and we would look at the album covers. I would buy an, al an album just because of one, one cut on it, you know? So yeah. now with these CDs, you can hardly even see it. So I was so happy when they were So Mary, it's a big, it, you know? big time for you. You got a book, you got the documentary, and you got a CD. Well, I got, and you plus I got my, my grandchildren. What are you talking about? Don't <laughs> <laughs> Let's well, get well, things into perspective. And when they, let me see, I got that. So my new book, you gotta, you gotta read it. It's really gorgeous. Jim knows all about it. It's really beautiful. The pictures are gorgeous. You yeah. show it's, it's, some of them Mary, you have the most right. wonderful love for life too. Yes. Yes. I do. Mary. All that energy is coming right down the screen at you. Mary's book, Supreme Glamour, is out now. Uh, yes. And the film, Hitsville, which we've been talking about, the making of Motown, is on general release uh, from the 4th.